All right, chapter 15, we finally get to integrate. Not only do we get to integrate, we even get to do double integrals. So iterated integrals, iterated just means you do a process and then you do it again, perhaps you do it again, perhaps you do it again, several iterations. Right now we're gonna be doing double integrals. So instead of just having dx, then we'll have dx and dy. Notice that these two go together in red. So sitting right in here, there would be some function that you would actually integrate. But I'm talking about the limits right now. So this means you're going to be integrating with respect to x first. After you integrate, then these are its limits 2 and 5. Second, we'll be integrating with respect to y, and its limits are 1 and 3. So in other words, if you look at the x, y plane, this is saying x goes from two to five. And this part says that y goes from one to three. So in that case, if it has to be between two and five on the x-axis and between one and three on the y-axis, then we're integra integrating over this region right here, this little rectangle. So sometimes this is called R, sometimes it's called A. Quite often it's called R for region, so this is the region that we're integrating over. Now let's do a specific example. Integrate from one to three, integrate from two to five, and then the function will be 3x squared times y dx dy. So this means that y is going to be held constant because we're going to be integrating with respect to x first. So do the antiderivative for this. So that would be x to the 3 over 3. And then that 3 and the over 3 are going to get canceled. In other words, the antiderivative is x cubed. And y is just being held constant, so it just stays there for now. And then we're going to evaluate it having x go from 2 to 5. And then this dy is just going to have to wait its turn until I'm finished integrating with respect to x. So this is going to be 5 cubed times y minus two cubed times y, and then there's still dy. So how much is five cubed minus two cubed? I think that's 117. Five cubed minus two cubed is a 117. So now I need to integrate from one to three, 117 times y. So the antiderivative here is going to be y squared over 2. So the 117 just sits there, then it's y squared over 2, evaluated from 1 to 3. So that will be a 117. And you could, like here I kept the y multiplied with each one. I could have also factored it out. So that with this 117, I could just carry it along, or actually 117 over 2, or I could go ahead and factor it out. I'm going to do that. And since I factored it out, all that's left is y squared, so that would be 3 squared minus 1 squared. So how much is that? So that's a 117 over 2, and then 9 minus 1 is 8. So if this is an eight and you cut it in half, that's four. So what's 117 times four? 468. Now, I'm gonna show you something that is extremely helpful with integrating. This is called Fubini's theorem. And the name isn't extremely important, but I know in the homework they're going to refer to it and say, which theorem is it? It's Fubini's theorem. And Fubini's theorem says that you can switch the order of integration. 
So I'm going to redo the problem. So that means I need to switch these as well. So integrate from 2 to 5, integrate from 1 to 3, the same function, but now switch the order. Go dy first and then dx. And we should end up with the same answer, 468. So integrating with respect to y first means that this becomes y squared over 2 and the 3x squared just stays there. And then we're evalu evaluating that as y goes from 1 to 3. The dx just needs to wait its turn. So that means substitute the 3, so that's going to be the 3x squared, you could just factor that and leave it there. And then this is going to be 3 squared, so that's 9 halves, minus 1 squared, so that's 1 half. And then last, we'll do the dx, integrate with respect to x. So 9 halves minus 1 half is 8 halves. That means that it's 4, so that means that this is 12x squared that we will integrate. And I know you're a little bit skeptical that we're going to get the same answer, but watch. So this is going to be x cubed over 3. When it's over 3, it's going to divide into this four times. And then finally, evaluate from 2 to 5. So we'll have 4, which you could factor out. And then it's going to be 5 cubed minus 2 cubed. That sounds familiar. That's 125 minus 8, that's 117. So it's 4 times 117, which is what I just did on the calculator. 4 times 117, it's the same answer, 468. Now, there's times in this one, it really didn't make a difference. Each one was equally easy and fun. Switching the order gave me the same answer, but when you look at the two of them, they're pretty much the same amount of work. But there are going to be times when you switch the order and one way is easier than the other. So it's good to have that ability. Next example. Integrate, the function is going to be two, oops, 2 minus y squared and then over the region r. So it could be that the limits are already set up for you. It could be that you need to figure it out yourself. But this one, I'll just make it easy. Suppose that it's this square right here. This is the region R. So that just means that X goes from 0 to 3 and Y goes from 0 to 3. So each one of them is going to go from 0 to 3. And then we have a choice. You can put dy dx or you could put dx dy. Which one should I put? dx? Okay. I'll put dx first. So integrate with respect to x. This whole thing is a constant, which means when you integrate this, it becomes just x. And then that x goes from 0 to 3. And then last, we'll integrate with respect to y. So this means substitute a 3, and it's going to be 3 times it. And then minus, when you substitute a 0, it's going to be 0. So it's really just 3 times the 2 minus y squared. And then we need to integrate that from 0 to 3. So I could factor out the constant 3, or just leave it factored out, and then do the antiderivative for 2, which will be 2y. And then for y squared, it will be y cubed over 3. And now it gets evaluated from 0 to 3. So that's going to be 
three times, let's see, this is going to be six minus three cubed over three. And when you substitute zero, those are all going to be zero. So what's this? Well, one of these threes will cancel, so that's going to be a nine. And so it's going to be three times six minus nine. That means it equals negative nine. Well, how could it be negative if there's no negatives in here? Well, this right here is a function that's going below the xy plane. So this is underground. So that's why it could be negative. Okay, now for the next example. So for this one, we're just going to set up the limits of integration. So what if it said double integral and then the function is y sine of x and then it's going to be over the region r and then this part is saying you need to either put dx dy or dy dx. It's your choice. And then here's the region r. So you go to one on the y-axis, one on the x-axis, put a dot, and make a straight line. Drop a line straight down, and then you've got a triangle. So the region is this triangle right here. Well, I can see clearly that x is going to go from 0 to 1. But what about the y? Well, in order to create this shaded region in here, I could break it up into subintervals and then say there's a rectangle in there. In fact, it would all be filled with rectangles from down here at zero to over here at one. But I don't need to write all those rectangles. I can just create one of them that represents those other rectangles. And then at the bottom, y is equal to zero. At the top, it's hitting this line right here, and because this is 1 and 1, that's a line with a slope of 1. So that's actually the line y equals x. So when I set up the double integral, this one should be numbers. This one, functions. If this is a rectangle, then these would both be numbers and these would both be numbers. But the y value is going from 0 up to the function y equals x. So for that reason, I'm going to do dy first. So y is going from 0 at the bottom to x at the top. And then dx second, and then x goes from 0 to 1. Basically what that second part does is it says take all of the rectangles including this one right here and then all the way to this one right here and then we're going to be adding all those up so x is going from 0 to 1. Now this one was just setting it up if you did integrate you would integrate with respect to y first so this would become y squared over 2 and then you'd plug in the 0 and plug in the x and continue from there but I was trying to model the homework and have one where you just set it up. How about one where we do get to integrate? Evaluate this double integral. It's going to be e to the x plus y is the function. We're going to go dy first and then dx. And the limits are 1 to natural log of 3, and then 0 to the natural log of 4. So integrate with respect to y. So if you were integrating just e to the y with respect to y, then the antiderivative would just be e to the y. And then whatever the numbers are, you'd plug them in. Well, if this was y plus 7, then this would be y plus 7. Well, that's basically like a 7, because right now we're integrating with respect to y, so x is a constant, just like having a 7. 
So the antiderivative will be e to the x plus y. That gets evaluated from 1 to the natural log of 3. And then later we'll integrate with respect to x. So this is, keep in mind we just did y. So this is what y is equal to. So that's going to be e to the x plus natural log of 3 and then minus e to the x plus 1. And then we still need to integrate with respect to x. x is going from 0 to natural log of 4. Okay, so the antiderivative of e to the x will be e to the x. That plus 3 just tags along, so it's going to be e to the x plus natural log of 3 minus e to the x plus 1, and then evaluate from 0 to the natural log of 4. So how much is that? It's going to be e to the natural log of 4 plus natural log of 3, and then minus e to the, and now substitute a 0. Oh, sorry, I didn't finish with the natural log of 4. So I did it for that one, I still need to do it for this one. Natural log of 4 plus 1, and then minus, when you substitute the 0 for x, so then this will just be e to the natural log of 3, and this one will be just e to the 1. And then on the homework, it's going to say simplify your answer. So I remember from algebra, if you have x to the n times x to the m, then that is x to the n plus m. And usually we go from this side to this side, but you can go the other way because it's an equal sign. So if there's a plus, you could break it up like this. That's what I'm going to do right here. So this is going to be e to the ln of 4 times e to the ln of 3. This one will be e to the ln of 4 times e to the 1. And then minus, in here, e and ln will cancel, so you just get the number 3. And then the number e. So in here, the e and the ln will cancel, so that's just 4. Likewise, this is just 3. 4 times 3, that's usually 12. And then this will be the number 4 times e, so minus 4 e's. And then minus 3 and distribute the negative plus e. So finally, the exact answer would be 12 minus 3 is 9. And when you combine the e's, it's going to be minus... 3e. So there is the exact answer. Okay, next up, double integral of sine squared. And then the region so it could also be defined like this and say r is this region. x is between 0 and pi, and y is between negative 1 and positive 1. So I'm looking forward to integrating sine squared, so I'm going to do integrating with respect to x first. So that means that this would be the limits for the first one. And that would be integrate sine squared with respect to x. And then second, we'll integrate with respect to y, going from negative 1 to 1. So it's been a while since doing integrating, but hopefully you remember from Math 3B, in order to integrate sine squared, you actually need to use a trig identity. So use 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. So that's not integrating it, that's just using a trig identity so that we can integrate it. And then this constant, I could just factor that one half out. 
And then, after you factor out the 2, find the antiderivative of 1. Since we're integrating with respect to x, that's just going to be the letter x. Then, integrate cosine of 2x. Negative cosine of 2x is going to be negative sine of 2x. And then, because of the chain rule, you have to divide by 2. And then that gets evaluated from 0 to pi. And then later we'll do dy. So how much is that? Substitute a pi. So that's going to be pi. And then when you substitute the pi right here, that's going to be sine of 2 pi, which is 0. OK, then substitute 0. So that's going to be 0. And then when you substitute 0 in here, it's going to say sine of 0, which is also 0. So the only thing that survived was that single pi. I like Olalaberry pi. Then integrate this. So integrating with respect to y means it's just going to be pi times y evaluated from negative 1 to 1. And don't forget that the 1 half was factored out. So this will be 1 half. You know what? I could even factor out the pi because it's a constant. And then substitute a 1 for y minus when you substitute a negative 1 for y. So this is going to turn out to be the number 2, which is actually going to cancel that. So the final answer is pi. The answer is always pi. What's for breakfast? Pie. What's for lunch? Pie. Then, check this one out. Next example, find the volume. Between z equals x squared plus y squared. So that is a circular paraboloid. And the square r, which is have x go from negative 2 to 2, and y go from negative 2 to 2. So this is basically the same thing, but then it's presented as a word problem rather than just giving you the double integral. So we just need to set up the do double integral ourselves. Now, basically what it's saying is you have a circular paraboloid like this. It is got its vertex at the origin like that. And then what we're going to do is, on the x-axis, go from negative 2 to positive 2. And on the y-axis, from negative 2 to positive 2. So this little square right here. And then basically, we're integrating all this region between the two. And then that will be a volume. So do double integral of the function x squared plus y squared. And then looking at this, between these two, which one is easier? They're the same. And over here, which one is easier? They're the same. So just randomly pick. Let's see. I'll just go with dx first. So. For a volume, you would have something like inches times inches times inches gives you a volume of cubic inches. Well, this would be in inches, this would be in inches, and this would be in inches. So basically, that's what we've got is we're multiplying three things. That means that we've got a volume. And then this just means go around the whole shape and add up all the volume. As x goes from negative 2 to 2, and as y goes from negative 2 to 2. So let's see. I'm integrating with respect to x first. So this becomes x cubed over 3. 
Now this is being held constant. So if this was something like a five, its antiderivative would be five x. Well, it's not a five, it's the constant y squared. So it's gonna be y squared times x. And then evaluate that from negative two to two for the x's and later integrate with respect to y. So substituting this for x, so that would be 8 thirds, and then plus, substitute this for x, so that's 2y squared, and then minus, and make sure you put parentheses or brackets because this minus applies to everything that comes after it. Now substitute a negative two. So if you put a negative two in here, it's gonna be negative eight thirds. And then substitute a negative two right here. So that's gonna be minus two y squared. Okay, so we should simplify. In here, a negative and a negative makes it positive. So we have 8 thirds plus another 8 thirds means there's 16 thirds. And here also the two negatives are going to cancel. So there's positive 2y squared with another positive 2y squared means there's positive 4y squared. And then integrate that with respect to y going from negative 2 to 2. So the first antiderivative is going to be 16 thirds times y. And then this will become y cubed over 3. So there's 4y cubed over 3. And then evaluate that from negative 2 to 2. Notice that this one is an odd power. So right now I'm just looking at the x's because I was plugging in these numbers for x. This is an odd power and this is an odd power. And when you have a positive and negative, then it's actually going to be negative, negative means you're doubling this, 16 thirds. And negative, negative makes positive, which means you're doubling this. So I could actually save a little bit of time by saying it's gonna be double of, and then just put one of the limits. Technically, I'm going now going to go from 0 to 2 and then double the answer. So it's going to be double of, let's see, so substitute a 2, that means it's going to be 32 thirds. And then it, 2 needs to be cubed, that's going to be an 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Well, that's a strange coincidence, 32 thirds and 32 thirds which means that is two times 64 thirds, right? 64 thirds. And so the final answer is 128 thirds.